Keep on cooking. America! Renee's Cooking in America is made possible by a grant from Carillon Importers, Teaneck, New Jersey. Early spring in the Napa Valley, America's great wine region. Every season here has its beauty. Pierre cruised in along Route 29, past the still-naked vines that would soon be heavy with grapes. But it was the food of Napa, as much as the wine, that lured Pierre on. Meadowwood, an elegantly laid-back resort, was Pierre's first stop on his tour of the valley. A luncheon of local duck was being prepared by Henri Delcroix. A French chef Pierre knew well by reputation. Meanwhile, in the dining room, Pierre joined Maurice Nerol, the hotel's general manager and a friend he hadn't seen for 10 years. A lot of things which reminds you of that, you know, like the trees. Uh, you've got these uh, olive trees that you have in the south yeah. of France and also Portugal, or, uh, and the fig trees. And uh, so, um, and of course, the, the vineyards, you know, because you have all, oh, look. Well, yeah. for instance, uh, this duck that we are going to have now, it's a um, Muscovy duck from, from the... California, yeah. From California, mm -hmm. no, not only California, but from the mm -hmm. Napa Valley. As luncheon progressed, the point was driven home time and again. As in Europe, here in Napa, great wine goes hand in hand with great food. I love what's going on. The relation, the great wine, a good food. So what I'm going to do for you here is a filet sole à la nage. It's something I did for a 60 meal gourmet some time ago, and uh, really it's easy to do. So what we need to do it, we need a filet of sole. It could be flounders, any kind of flat fish. Basically the filet, that's where they come. They together, two together, but this I'm going to do something different. I'm going to separate them like this here because sometimes there's bone here, see? So we're going to separate them and I'm going to turn them upside down like this and I'm going to roll them like this, you see? Very uh, We roll them and uh, put a toothpick to hold them together and we're going to put this right here. Okay, this way. Okay. To do this now, we need some mussels. It's about a one pound of mussel, and uh, to be scrubbed and clean. So to clean them, you have to pull the bear right this. And sometimes they have barnacles. So what you do, you scrape them with a knife like this. This those are very clean, you see. But sometimes they are. So you keep doing this, you know, like uh, here. You pull the the bear, and that's it. And then what we do, we put them in the water, fresh water. Those are too clean, okay? We put water, we rub them against each other. While they're rubbing against each other, they clean themselves. So any sand or any piece, small piece of barnacle, and you change the water a few times. I'm going to put some more. We change the water a few times, and we put it over here. We strain them. And from then, we have to cook them. So to cook them, they're right in the pot here. We steam them, and then we put two cups of wine, white wine, dry white wine. It's a good California wine. And uh, 
with about two cups to steam them, to open them, one bay leaf, a sprig of thyme, and some ginger, fresh ginger. We cover them and we steam them for about 30 seconds. They're going to open very quickly. And after they open, you cool them off a little bit and uh, you, you remove them from the shell. This is a piece of cake, like uh, some people tell me all the time. And uh, that's all. You uh, we keep them here. And then I got some juice of the, the, that, the stock that I've been cooked here with the wine. I'm going to put that right in here, over here. And I'm going to put some shallots. See here, I got a little bit of butter right here on the bottom. We put about two tablespoons of shallots. Salt and pepper to taste. Not too much salt, but a little bit of salt. We put the juice. We put the juice right in here. We cover them. We're going to cook them. OK, right in here. And this cook for about three or four minutes. I have to do something else. I'm going to take some zucchini, about, a, uh, about half a pot of zucchini, that uh, you're going to slice them with this little gadget here. We make a thin, thin slice like this. It's a little gadget. It's very, not very expensive, and it works very well. They got different blade. At this one, you don't use it. Very easy, see? You have some very nice little strip like this. Look like almost like spaghetti. Okay. Beautiful, look at that. So now, it's about ready here, yes. I'm going to put the zucchini right over. Spread them around like this. And more. Okay. I'm going to put a few carrots. Okay. One p. Ah, uh, one more. Ha. About one tablespoon of butter. That's uh, the only butter I'm going to use. One tablespoon of butter. And I'm going to cook them a little more. The zucchini, they have to be cooked only for about 30 to, 30 to 35 seconds. I want this zucchini to be al dente. Now let's see what happened to the mussel. Beautiful. You see the mussel is right here. But I show you. I'm going to show you what to do. I do with it. I just take them off the, the shell like this. Very easy. Look at that plum. It's beautiful. And then... I'm going to put the mussel in here over, like this. And basically, we're going to cook that very, very fast. I'm going to peel, finish those mussel here because we need some more. They, they're very hot, you know, but, uh, you know, you don't have to do what I can do. I'm kind of crazy sometimes, you know. So I love to pick them up. I've been cooking for so many years, you know. I'm foolproof now. All right, very good. This should be cooked. Okay, now we're going to put them together. Right in here. We're going to put them together right here. Okay. I'm going to take two fillets. I'm going to do only one portion. Take a nice one here. Now, I'm going to go fishing for mussels. I'm going to put a few mussels around, maybe four or five, you know. And then I'm going to go fishing for carrots. I'm going to put some carrots like this here. Put four, as many as you want. And all we have to do here now is to put some good stock here. Okay, I like this like that. All right, we have to look pretty. This is my low calorie recipe.
And now I'm going to take you to a very hot restaurant in Napa Valley. Pierre soon coasted into Travigna, where authentic Italian food is seasoned with the spirit of wine country. The restaurant's dining room is a lively, lofty space with an informality that has captured the valley. In the kitchen, the maestro is Michael Ciarello, whose Calital cooking comes to him naturally. He grew up with this kind of robust food and a mother who cured her own hams and made her own sausages. Trevigna carries on that tradition. The cantina, alongside the restaurant, offers locally pressed olive oils, vinegars made from Napa wines, homemade pastas, and California cured prosciuttos. And just one flight up, Pierre got the chance to see Michael's handiwork in progress. And this is your curing room, uh, Michael. Yeah, this is what we call the uh, Sala Maria. That's Italian for curing and aging room. Um, here we bring up all of the different products we do. This is a prosciutto that's one year old. Ready to go, huh? Ready to go today. On to a couple of salamis, a Toscano salami, uh, a calabrese, something a little spicy. I know, I love that. I yeah, got some this morning. Yeah. We, we eat like a pepperoni on pizza. Yeah. A brazaula or an air-dried beef. Fresh. Good for a salad. Pancetta. Pancetta. Bacon unsmoked. A few more prosciutto. All the goodies I love, you know? These over here are a few <coughs> prosciutto that we have on salt. These are almost done. It's just a mixture of salt and peppercorns and bay leaf. Bay leaf, man. It's my fresh. How long These go 40 days. And then uh, they go into the water like you saw coming up yeah, the so stairs. Yeah. From there, they come up and they hang up here for a couple of days to dry. They get pressed for one week. And then they, then they hang for another seven or eight months. And then they're ready to come into the kitchen and slice them up. Very good. Since we're talking Beautiful. about the kitchen, what do you say we're going to make a little okay, bit of pasta? Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay, today we're going to make a little orchietta pasta. It's just some orchietta, which means little ears. Uh -huh. With a mascarpone of smoked salmon and a little absolute pepper vodka just at the end for a little bite. Great. Let's go take a look. Okay. So we have here just a little bit of fennel. Onion and celery. They were sweating with some butter. Little butter, huh? Just a little bit of butter. We're gonna take, in this case, a duck one Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, it's yeah. a very light Sauvignon Blanc. In Napa Valley, we get many, many, many great wines to work with. So you're making a fish, fish stock, a stock. You're making fish that. stock, just like you would, the French would fish call it a blanc. Only we're gonna use. Maybe you can hand me those smoked salmon. There we go. It's just some smoked salmon pieces. Just some trim. That if you go to the store, you can get yeah. very inexpensively. You put in some of these pieces just to infuse some of the flavor. Yeah. Okay. And give a little smoke flavor and the fish flavor at the same time. Right. Absolutely. How long you cook this? Maybe it's 40 minutes. 40 yes. minutes. Just enough. There's no water I added to it. No just water. Wine. Just a little bit of wine right into the infusion. Maybe a little bit more wine. Okay. So this, once you bring it up to a boil. And you strain that in the And then we strain base. that and the, and, the, and the jus looks just like this. Yeah, it would do okay. the base. Oh, right, it's a good good sauce base. To this, we're going to put in a little bit of cream. And that's it. And we Fun. have the rest of the, the condiments. This will put on the back burner uh -huh. just to simmer for a little bit. We're going to go ahead. Maybe you can uh, put a couple of handfuls of pasta right into there for me. Okay, there we go. Okay. The pasta is going to go ahead and cook. In the time that pasta takes to cook, um, we should be totally done with this, with this uh, entire dish. All okay? right. So, so from here, we're going to take a little bit of the fumé into a hot saute pan. OK. Now, the trick to this dish, we're going to use an old cheese making technique of using some tartaric acid, which is like cream of tartar, if you were to do this at home. Rather than boiling the cream down that we're going to add for for, uh, for viscosity, uh -huh. we're going to get a little pinch of this. This is going to make like a curd. It's going to make the sauce yeah. tight, so we don't have increased calories, and, and we don't have an overly rich sauce. In California, you have to be careful because it never gets that cold. Yeah. So you put the cream first, right? Right, so now we're going to go into the, go in with the cream. Okay. That's heavy cream. This is heavy cream. Okay. Once this comes up, just just before it begins to boil, yeah, we'll give it a taste. 
It's hard not to taste with your fingers. Uh, I always okay. do. That's the only way. You say, tasting with the spoons like making love with gloves I, on. I agree completely. I feel that way too. <laughs> so, you have to be careful. You don't need much salt because in the smoked salmon, there's a good amount of salt. Now this is gonna, once this comes up, I got a little bit of salt and pepper in there. That's something, salt and pepper, nothing else. Salt and pepper, nothing and else so far. the flavor of the fish. And the flavor of the fish. We're gonna try to boil down the cream just to get it back to the original viscosity of the cream. Yeah, I do. Okay? Yeah. I understand. Let me get there. Okay, into here. Now, a small pinch of the tartaric acid. A very, very, very small lead, pinch. Eh? You just need a little bit. Yeah, now, yeah. You watch what happens to the sauce as I put this in. That's a okay? dash, huh? Just a dash. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay? And when I put this in, it will thicken the cream. You see that? Oh, yes. It will make the cream twice as thick as it was before. Yeah. Okay? That's it, yeah. That's it, yeah. And that's it. So to this... So you got volume. You have Instead volume. of reducing, you get volume. Right. And to this, you got some chopped dill. Uh-huh. Okay? You want this pasta to be very fresh, so you want the dill, the flavor, very up front. Okay? And when, once the dill comes back up to a boil, get some flavor. Go a little bit. Now I've smoked salmon. Maybe you can pull the pasta out of the water and have it ready. The salmon you don't want to cook. All you want to do warm is, it up. is warm it up. Okay? I'm going to go a little bit of salmon caviar. Buzz. Okay. Start to smell go. good. Now go ahead. You want it in there? There we go. Okay. Now all we want to do is bring this up to a boil. Warm it up a little bit. And Warm it up. It. Now the trick to this yeah. dish, I, I use an absolute pepper vodka, but you want it right in at the end. At the end. Okay, because you, yeah. want, you want the flavor of the vodka yeah, to come absolutely. through. Okay, so right at the end we just give it a little and that's it. You put a what? About two okay. two May, maybe uh, one teaspoon. One, one okay. teaspoon. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This should be something that you can be able to eat ambient temperature. And just to give the flavor, different flavor. So the flavor whole thing bind together, give it a, another right. flavor. Right. So that's it. We put it on the plate and we eat it. Very simple, very straightforward. Huh? Yeah, I might take some fish. There we go. Mmm. Huh? Flavor is very good. It's a nice combination. So you taste the vodka. Yeah, the now, vodka and... Uh, one ice cold shot of vodka. While you're drinking, this is perfect. You're creating another even, flavor. Even in the Napa Valley, this is perfect. Just up the road, Pierre pulled into one of the valley's great vineyards, Beringer. Jerry Comfort, the resident chef there, was already at work preparing a dinner to be held that night in Pierre's honor. Hi, Jerry. Welcome, Pierre, to the Hudson House at Beringer Vineyards. Well, I'm glad to be here. As you know, I've been tasting food all over the Napa Valley. And I think you and I, we should cook something together, okay? Sounds great. And uh, I call you, and uh, do you order all the food that I ask you to do? I've got it taken care of. I even started cooking your sausage. Oh, great. So the sausage are cooked. And uh, so you got sausage in here, right? Right. You got the onions, shallots. It's all there. All right. So it's all done. Now we're going to add the, we're going to add the, the apple. Can okay. you give me the apple? How much you would you like? I, I want to do uh, about a cup and a half of apple. Cup and a half or so? Yes. I could put in more. A little bit more? more. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, good. And uh, we're going to put the raisin, about the same amount. Let's put that all the way up because we... Okay, the ra raisin. And uh, the seasoning. Okay. Cool. Um, Cumin and cinnamon. With a little bit of cumin. I put very little cinnamon in here because cinnamon is very strong. I like the flavor. The idea is to combine all those flavors and to create another flavor, you know? Mm -hmm. But of course, we have to test it. Yes. Then, we're gonna put the, the couscous. Okay. Couscous is available all over the place. There's something new that, uh, you know, comes from Morocco and Israel. So we put a couscous. Okay, there's a 
cup and a half or so? How about a cup and a quarter, yeah. Oop! That's about a cup and a quarter, a little more, like this. All right, that's about a cup and a quarter. And uh, then we put, you got chicken stock here somewhere? We have it right here for you. Okay. Okay, we're gonna bring that to a bowl. It's got to be very hot. And uh, you put about a cup, uh, cup and a half. Okay. Let's, uh, let's put in more. A little bit more? Yeah. We cover it and we let it rest for five minutes. Here's your coriander. Okay, the coriander. The couscous is going to absorb all the moisture. I want that to be very dry, you know? Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, we cool it off. And that's it. Okay, now I think it's time to look at the stuffing, you know? Okay. It's been cooling off for five minutes. And the reason I'm doing this is to give the chance for the couscous to absorb the moisture. You know? Sure, sure. Okay, what we need now, we have to put some Bombay gin in here. Okay, how much? The reason I'm putting gin in there is because it gives a very nice juniper berry flavor. And when you combine all the flavor, all the spices together, you create another flavor. And that's a trick of cooking. We don't want you can tell what it is, you see? Sure. So, all right, you put about the, you know, two, three, three spoon, you know, quarter cup, okay, I think so. And you put some butter, you know. You put about, well, I think, yeah, that's maybe a little more, okay? Very good, so we're gonna bind this together very well, and then we're gonna test it, yeah. I want you to test it. And uh, don't be afraid to tell me if it's lousy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it's going to be very good. A lot of flavor. Is enough salt, enough pepper? Uh, what do you think? It's wonderful. All right, that's what you work for, right? <laughs> it's on my shoulders now. All right, now we're going to transfer that to a, to a, la a different bowl because we want that to cool off okay. very quickly, you know? Okay. Whichever way is easier for you. We just want to put, it's got to be like lukewarm. And we have to spread it out. And, uh, okay, so that way it's going to cool up much quicker. And the next thing, we're going to stuff it. Wonderful. Now, we have to stuff the quail, you know, we got more work to do, you well, know? Well, let's do it. All right. <clears throat> okay, yes, I'm going to put about three tablespoons, like a, no, I'm sorry, three teaspoons or one tablespoon of, uh, of that stuffing on each quail here, that's about enough here. Okay. Then we're gonna tuck this under like this. And then we're gonna put the wing, you know, this is, that go, that way they're gonna hold their shape. I don't want the wing to go like that, you sure. know, to spread out. So. Looks like he's flying. Eh? Like he's flying, yeah. Then, a toothpick right in here, above the, to, to the, the 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 bone of the legs and we just stuck it this way and of course we have to put some seasoning I always put some salt you know I use coarse salt you know all the time on both sides very important and then freshly ground paper I'm using white paper here okay a little bit of a uh, time leaves here on each side and uh, not much, just enough to get a little flavor, you know? Looks great. And uh, the legs I got to cross like this, and now they're ready for cooking. Okay, we're gonna cook them now, right? So we're gonna put them uh, this way first, Okay. See? So that mm -hmm. way it's gonna, the stuffing is gonna be sealed, you know, uh -huh. this way. We're gonna brown them a little bit on each side, you know, not very lightly, I want a very little, Brown, light brown. Okay. And you shake a little bit like this, you know? And uh, maybe a little more far, a bit. Oh, that's all right. Just enough. What's very important, not too much on the back, but the brown, the, the top, you know, the breast size got to be cooked. Uh, nice color, longer. huh? Yeah. Nice uh, color on those. Now a little bit of wine. 
Chardonnay, huh? That's the one we'll be serving. All right. Some stock. There it is. Do that, and we're gonna cook that and reduce it later on. Okay. I cover. Well, you know, it's been cooking for about six, seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Nothing should be ready. Okay. All we have to do now is to add some grapes to it. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Really good. Give me some grapes, right? Okay. All right. Uh, just like this. Put a, you know, for about 10 grapes per person. No more. No more? Uh, that's enough. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to, i tell you what, um, I'm going to put the quail here and you remove the, the toothpick, huh? I can do that. You could do that. How much? Yeah. You're right, you know, I think I'm gonna, I'm That's gonna good. hire you, you know? Well, the, I'm ready. What a team! <laughs> you said the uh, Caribbean next, right? All right, now a little, uh, little bit of butter, see, just enough butter. Mm. You have to taste it. Tasting is very important. And uh, do me a favor, put the butter in there. And when you test, I always test, use my finger, you know? We have to bind the butter, we can bind the sauce like this. That's the way to do it. Don't okay. use a wish, some people use a wish. Okay. See, that's just the idea. It takes a little while to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. The butter has to be soft. Okay. Make sure that everything is melted, you yeah? know. All right, that's, see the sauce is all thickening. You know? Oh, yeah. All right. We put the, a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, just to all over. Alright. And uh, now, at the end, you put the sauce right over like this. Okay. The sauce, the shorter they are, the better they are, you know. Okay. Well, that's it. Beautiful. Harry, you take over for the rest of the meal. I have a great coffee night. Thank you. Uh, thank I you. enjoyed it very much. The recipes from today's show and from the entire series are contained in the companion cookbook Pierre Frenet's Cooking in America, published by Alfred A. Knopp. To order, call 1-800-441-3000. The 236-page volume contains over 150 easy-to-follow recipes for the home chef. The price is $25 plus shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready when you call. Pierre Frenet's Cooking in America was made possible by a grant from Carillon Importers, Teaneck, New Jersey.